Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution R Step Play, and today I'm going to show you how I use these materials to do my newest drawing of raspberries. And I'm showing mostly my polychromos here, but I did use some other colored pencils, such as some Derwent drawings, some Soho, Luminance, Holbein, pretty much anything I had on hand that had the colors I needed. But the polychromos is what I use the most because they're oil based and they worked best on this paper. Before we get to the actual project, I just wanted to show you my preliminary sketch. This was done on gridded paper, and I covered the back with soft pastel or chalk pastel, and I put that pastel side down on my sanded paper and then traced over it, and that's how I got my outline. I like to use the gridded paper because, or at least when I'm using the grid method, I don't always use the grid method, but for this one, there was just so much to it with all the different little bumps and nooks and crannies that it was easier for me to decipher the actual image by using the grid method and I always use gridded paper when I am doing the grid method because I can't draw straight lines very well even with a ruler I end up going diagonal and if it's even a quarter of an inch off it's gonna throw the whole drawing off like if one of your little squares is not exactly square then your drawing will be warped and so that's why I always end up using gridded paper I use the Ben Fang or Ben, I don't know how to exactly say it. I'll link it in the description below, but I use that because then I don't have to worry about it. And I also don't want to grid directly on my actual drawing paper. I don't want to have to worry about covering up those lines or erasing them or any of that. And I don't draw directly on my drawing paper, even when I'm freehanding, because I don't want to mess up my expensive paper doing erasing and all that while I'm trying to work out my preliminary sketch. And so I always use a transfer method one way or another, whether I'm freehand and gridding or whatever, I always do it on a separate piece of paper first and then transfer it to my actual drawing paper. So that's a little bit about my preliminary sketch process. I usually just do very preliminary outlines. I don't know how many times I can say preliminary. I'm sorry. I just use basic outlines. I don't necessarily grid every single detail. Some of the shadows I might grid out a little bit, but for the most part, it's very basic. And then I do the bulk of the work on my actual paper after it's transferred. So let's get back to this in and of itself. This is not going to be a tutorial on how to draw raspberries. This is going to be a very sped up process because this took a lot of hours. Basically, I want to share some tips with you that I've learned since I've been working with oil pastels. This is only my third piece, but I have fallen in love and a lot of people have been asking me questions online about my process. And so that's basically what this video is going to be about. So that way there you can you might be able to take this information and um, use it for one of your own drawings. And if you are interested in me doing a smaller, slowed down, simplistic drawing as a tutorial, something that would be easy to follow along with, let me know. Um, and that's something that I could probably do because like I said, this was hours of footage and it's definitely going to be sped up and it's kind of a complicated drawing. And really, I just want to share some tips with you that you can use on your own artwork. So... When working with oil pastels, I find that it's easier to put the oil pastels down first as a preliminary layer and then come back through and do the finer details with colored pencils. And so far, my favorite paper to work on has been by far sanded paper and the Lux Archival sanded paper is my favorite. It is a pricey paper, but it's really high quality and it is archival. It's in its name. It's acid free. A lot of the other sanded papers that are out there are not acid free, at least not fully. They have an acid, like they have acid in their backing and things like that. I know I've heard that UR isn't acid free on the back and neither is Fisher 400 or whatever that brand is. But I have found one other paper that I have used in my drawing. I think it was my second pastel drawing. It was a drawing of a pumpkin and it was, it's a sanded paper. It's called Art Spectrum Color Fix and I got that from Jerry's Artorama. I used my acid testing pen on the back of that and that was also acid free. It's not as high quality as the Lux Archival, but it, it got the job done. 
And I find I like sanded paper the best because it can take all the layers I need. The pastels blend beautifully on it, but also there's still enough tooth there that I can come through with my pencils and they'll have something to grip to. So I found that to be really important. I also found that harder pencils such as polychromos work best because as many know, oil-based pencils tend to work best on sanded paper anyways. And so that's why I used a lot of polychromos here. But there were a few colors that I found in my other brands that I ended up using that really helped. The Prisma colors really, really helped as far as the light blues went that I needed for some of those highlights. And they actually worked really well mixing with the pastels themselves because oil pastels are made from a lot of the same ingredients that colored pencils are. They're just a lot softer. And I am using the Van Gogh oil pastels i love these they blend beautifully they have light fast ratings on them which is something that's very important to me i've had a hard time finding pastels that aren't student grade you know like there's a lot of student grade oil pastels out there that don't have any light fast or pigment information on them and these have the information on them that i was looking for and i was very happy with that i'm very happy with the blendability so so far my favorite oil pastels are the van gogh oil pastels i do have some co e nor Oil pastels, they tend to be a little bit harder than these and they don't blend as easily. Those also have light fast ratings on them, but they're not as, I believe they have light fast ratings on them. I'd have to look again, but they're either way, they're not as soft and blendy as these ones are. And I, I really love these a lot. And so basically I'm going through and I'm using my oil pastels as like a catalyst or like a, a vehicle or lubricant for those colored pencils. This paper is made for colored pencils, but it's really made to be used with a brush and pencil blending powder and things like that. And I haven't gotten into the routine of doing that method yet. <laughs> and of course, whenever I get a new paper, I like to try all kinds of different mediums on it because I am somebody who works in a lot of mediums. And so when I first got this paper, I had also been trying out oil pastels for the first time. And when I tried the combination together, I'm like, holy crap, this is... This is the holy grail of combination. Like I, I've tried my oil pastels on other paper and oil pastels will write on basically anything. They really do write on anything, but the blendability and all the, just the way that I like to work, to me, my favorite paper is definitely the Lux Archival. And so as you see though, I'm able to layer those and then I can come back on top and get some fine detail. And it's not gonna be the highest detail that you normally be able to get with colored pencil because there are, there's a big thick layer of oil pastel underneath. But what it does is it blends everything together. I'm able to smooth out my oil pastels with my pencils, but I'm also able to go on top of them with it. And of course I come back a little later sometimes and have to go over the colored pencil again with oil pastel and blend it out and that worked really well as well and that was basically how I was able to fix my mistakes because this is not erasable. <laughs> I actually, um, erasers work really well to blend oil pastel I have discovered. Um, I have some of the Faber-Castell eraser pencil things like their perfection eraser or precision eraser, whatever it's called. And I use the pink one to blend out in this. You'll actually see that. You can use some scraping techniques. It's not as easy I have found on the sanded paper as it would be on like a bristle board or other papers that people usually use for oil pastels. But I do use my ceramic craft knife and scrape out some details here and there. And it works, but like I said, just not as easily as it would on a smoother paper. But that's okay because with my harder pencils, I'm able to come in and get really fine lines on top of it. Like it kind of scrapes away the pastel when I need it to, if I'm using a hard, like hard pressure to get that line in there. And you'll see me do that when I'm getting the little wispy things on the, the raspberries. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going through and I am coloring each one of the little bumps individually. I think that they're called, um, I had it. I looked it up to see what the bumps were called and it's kind of a funny name and I can't think of it at the moment. Drooplets. They're called drooplets. <laughs> it's like droplets, but it's drooplets. And basically it means um, like a drooplet is part of an aggregate, I can't say that word, fruit. And an aggregate fruit is basically a bunch of little fruits made up, like pushed, like 
put together to create one fruit. So that's what a raspberry is and a blackberry, and there's a few other uh, others out there. And I never knew any of that. I did not know the anatomy of a raspberry until I was working on this, and I wanted to know what the little bumps were called, and I started looking it up. So I was coloring each little droplet individually. I found it was easier to break the the composition down that way, and it really, really helped me to focus and to not get overwhelmed with the composition. And that was another reason why I found it easier to grid this one first. I initially had tried to sketch it out in my sketchbook first, and it just didn't really cut it for me. And so I decided the grid method was what I needed because I was kind of getting lost in all the details. But this one, this is, like I said, this is my third piece using these techniques. And so I'm no expert when it comes to oil pastels. This is just how I work with oil pastels. There are other artists out there who have been working with oil pastels for years and years and years. And at some point I would like to take the training wheels off and not necessarily use my colored pencil with oil pastels, but I'm definitely more comfortable with colored pencil than I am oil pastel at this point. But there is, it is mostly oil pastel with details of colored pencil, but the colored pencil part takes longer. So the details kind of took a little bit longer, but as far as pigment goes, there's definitely more oil pastel on the paper than colored pencil, just because it lays down so thickly right out of the gate. But it's so much fun and it actually is a fairly quick process, but this just was a tedious subject. And so that's why it took me about three weeks to do this piece. And part of that is because I really only work on art on the weekends because of my day job, but a lot of it has to do with how detailed this subject was. Whereas when I first started, the first time I did an oil pastel piece, I did blueberries. That one didn't take as long. I mean, it was still pretty detailed, but it didn't have the amount of detail that this piece does. And so I kind of worked my way up subject wise. And I can't wait to do another one. I might need to take a break from it for a little bit and do some other mediums first. But every time I work with oil pastel, I love it more and more. And the thing that I love the most about oil pastel is its vibrancy. Like the color saturation that I was able to get here and how fast and how well it worked with the colored pencils. It was just super exciting. And there were times when I tried to lay down the colored pencil first, but it didn't. It didn't work the same way as I would have liked. It took, it would take longer that way. So I did find like, I might outline a couple of the droplets or a bunch of the droplets with colored pencil just to, to have them separated so I could see it more visually. But then I came in with my, my oil pastels and then again with my colored pencil. And I found that that worked really well. As far as blending goes, I used some paper blending stumps and I also used some soft tools and some Jane Davenport uh, wand blenders. They look like eyeshadow blenders and those worked really, really well. It blended everything together beautifully. I was able to soften the lines that I wanted to and I was able to get the detail that I needed with the paper blending stump. And you can see I'm using a variety of pencils at this point. I'm going back and forth. I've I use my polychromos a lot, but I have some lighter pinks that I found in my Soho brand that really worked well. And I found some, like I said, the blues were from Prismacolor. I have a really dark purpley color. I think it's like raisin or something like that that I used by Holbein. And I just kind of used whatever I needed at this time. Anything that I thought would work well with this piece. It was a big experiment. but it was so much fun. And I just loved how well it blended out and how well it went on top. Now you notice the colored pencil isn't the most opaque on top. Like I had to really come in to get those highest highlights. And I came through with the white polychromos first to get some of that blended out and some of the lighter blues to get that kind of feeling of reflection on each of the little bumps. And then I would come through with my Derwent Drawing Chinese White, which is the, <laughs> the white pencil in my collection. Like, I love my white pencils. And I tried to do that with some of, because I do have Holbein, but I found that this worked a little bit better on the sanded paper than the Holbein did. And so the Derwent Drawing Chinese White was like what I used for the highest highlights. 
it worked pretty well on the sanded paper even though it, it can be a little bit on the waxier side but I feel like the whole bind is even waxier and I was able to use some of my pencils to mask off some of the little hairs as well ahead of time and it worked really well by just pushing into the paper but I really didn't want to do that because I wanted to be able to I mean some of them didn't end up being in the place that I wanted them to so I kind of regretted it after so then after that I just came and did it over that and one thing to keep in mind when you're drawing anything is that it's never going to be just one straight color like from far away these look like pink or red raspberries there are a lot of different shades of pink here depending on where it's facing some of them are redder some of them are like a little bit orange some of them are pink some of them are more purple because I took this reference photo and I used natural light to take the reference photo and I did this next to a window where the and it was a blue sky so there's a lot of blue mixed in with the highlights as well because there was blue sky reflecting off of them but then in some of the areas where you're gonna have some reflected light on the bottoms of the droplets you'll get that reddish tint because it's bouncing off the other raspberries and so these are things to keep in mind no matter what subject you're looking at you always want to look at what direction your light is coming from because that's going to tell you where your shadows are going to come from you want to look at the temperature of the colors that you have so anytime you're doing anything realistic you want to look at your values and you want to look at the color temperature and that will kind of help even if you don't have exact colors it's good to have that variety in there you want to have the full range of things and color temperature really helps to bring out the realism as well especially on a subject like this it's all about variety so there was a ton I can't even tell you the amount of pencils like in the beginning I'm like oh here's like three polychromos just to have a b-roll no there was <laughs> there was over 30 pencils probably used in this and a lot of that was trial and error because I'd come on and I'd be like oh that's a little too blue Ooh, I put that a little too close to an orangey color so it kind of dulled it out or it was just a back and forth and so and don't be afraid to experiment and if something if you don't like something just go over it and that was one thing this wasn't erasable but it was easy to draw over it of course it would have been really difficult to go completely back to white but thankfully with this particular subject it's all within like a similar color so I'm able to get you know I can change the temperature of the color just by layering over it so I don't have to worry about going back to white but it's just something to keep in mind it layers really well especially on this paper I find smoother papers are harder to get all the layers in there that I need with the oil pastels because obviously it's going to fill up too quick and this paper really took a beating and so it, it definitely allowed me to get the layers that I wanted. And if I had really needed to get higher highlights I could have come in with the brush and pencil touch up and titanium white mixture and I thought about doing that but when I looked at it in, next to my reference photo I realized that my highlights were where I needed them at the end of it it was all about contrasting it with the shadows of course I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit hoarse um, this has been kind of a rough week we just had to say goodbye to my 14 year old chihuahua on Monday and so it's been a lot of days of crying and things like that so my voice probably sounds horrible right now <laughs> and well that's why <clears throat> so I apologize for that but it's been a rough week so now that we're on to the main one the thing that I wanted to remember and this is something to keep in mind when you are doing your own compositions the if you look the raspberries in the background are a little bit bluer than the ones that come forward and that is because cooler colors recede warmer colors come forward and so even though these are all raspberries and there's the same colored raspberries I wanted to keep that in mind and even in my reference that's how it showed so I looked for those subtle tones and they also were a little bit blurrier I blended out those lines a little bit more to to get those background raspberries that are behind this main one to recede and so now that I'm on to the main one this one's gonna have a little bit higher detail it's gonna have higher contrast there's gonna definitely be darker shadows and lighter highlights and the details of the droplets are gonna be more refined and overall this is going to be much warmer than the ones directly behind it 
So keep that in mind if you're doing a landscape or even a still life like I am. In any media that you're working in, whether it's oil pastel or oil paint or just regular colored pencil, just keep those rules in mind that red usually pops forward. And there were some times when those rules aren't hard and fast. Like there are times like in this piece where red were, some of my darkest shadows were actually red. And it ended up working because this particular subject is very, it's almost iridescent. Like you, light comes through it. And so even though they're in shadow, there's light coming through from the top of some of them and there's light reflecting on it. And so it really depends on the subject. Just look closely at your reference photo whenever you're looking for those things. Your, the information will be right there in your reference photo. Don't be afraid to play with color. Don't be afraid to pop things up a bit. And again, if you don't like it, you can just go over it. But yeah, I'm really, really loving oil pastels now. This was definitely a learning experience. This one took me longer than the other two that I've created. And it was definitely tedious. But this is my favorite fruit, so it had to happen. I have like a whole series of fruit paintings that I've done in this style. I have the blueberry ones. I have these raspberries. But then I've also done some watermelon and strawberries and acrylic which I did years ago and that's what set the tone for me doing this kind of composition and I also like to draw candy in this sort of style too like the you know the page filling kind of composition and so I have like a whole series of fruit and candy and just food clearly I am very inspired by food and nature if you ever look at my artwork there's definitely like i'm either inspired by edible things or things that you can find in nature and occasionally i do portraits but not as much as i used to i don't know what i'm gonna draw next the next time i do oil pastels but this ended up I've been wanting to draw this for a really long time. I had bought raspberries specifically, well, not just so I could take pictures of them because obviously I ate them after, but I bought them so I could take pictures of them because I wanted to draw this. And originally the plan was to draw them with just regular colored pencils, but I had been craving using oil pastels and this ended up working out perfectly. I was able to get the softness that I wanted and like the iridescent kind of look and I really am very, very pleased with how this came out. And I did enjoy myself making it. It was very repetitive. And this is a close-up, so you can kind of see how I'm doing this layering. I go in with the oil pastel. I blend it out. I come in with my colored pencils on top to do detail. And I just keep repeating that. I kind of like to try to do a landscape or something with oil pastels, something a little bit more broad. I feel like if I'm able to do something that's as detailed as this with something that isn't a very detailed tool to begin with, such as oil pastels, I feel like an like a, a landscape might be fun to do. I don't know. I'll have to see. Like I said, it might be a little while before I work with this medium again just because I have a bunch of other mediums lined up that I plan on using soon. Sorry about the lighting, it kind of got wonky here. But it's just me going through with oil pastel and coming back <laughs> with colored pencils. I mean, that's one of the main questions that I've been getting is what order do you go in? And you would think it would be the other way and I feel like Oil pastels would layer easier on colored pencil if you're working on smoother paper. Although I was able to get some detail just experimenting by doing oil pastel first and then colored pencil on top when I was playing around on some bristle paper. But I didn't do like any real piece with it. It was just when I was trying out what kinds of papers I thought I might like. But now I'm spoiled. I fell in love with this paper. I actually, the first one that I did... The blueberry one I did, a friend of mine, Nick Edgar, had given me some of the Lux Archival paper to try out. And if you know him, he is somebody who is really, really good at using the, what is it, the colored pencil blender and all, you know, like the actual kit that comes from brush and pencil. 
And he's great at using that technique, which like I said before, I haven't really gotten into that technique yet. I've tried it a few times, but I haven't done a full piece with it yet. And so he loves these products and he loves the Lux Archival. So he gave me a couple pieces to try out. And I've tried it with a few different mediums. And then I tried it with oil pastels for my blueberry drawing and I fell in love. And then I think that was my last piece that I had. And I wanted to work with oil pastels again. And that's when I realized that I had some of the the Art Spectrum Color Fix paper. I had some of that in the studio and I tried that. And like I said, it worked well, but it doesn't take as many layers. And it's just not, the texture isn't as even. It's, you just don't feel the same quality. But it does work and I tested it with my pen on the back for acid and it was acid free. And I was really relieved about that because I didn't know what to expect from that company because I don't know much about it. So here is the finished piece. Oh, I'm really happy with how it came out. Anyways, I'm sorry that this was such a rambly video. Like I said, I'm kind of out of it this week. It's been a rough one. But I hope that you kind of learned a little bit about my techniques. And if you would like to see me do, like I said, a, a slowed down version of something more simple that you could follow along on with this technique, just let me know and maybe we can come up with a subject that would be easy for beginners. All right, so thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Have a good night. Bye.